All right, everybody. We got a bunch of corn. Eight kilograms. Eight kilograms worth. That's like uh, 16, 17-ish pounds of corn. And uh, we were just reminiscing that uh, if you'd have told me when I was younger that I'd be in my 40s in a foreign country and still shucking corn, I'd have told you you were crazy. If he had told me six years ago when he invited me to join him in Korea that I would be shucking corn in Korea, I'd have probably laughed at him. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, that one's lovely. Yeah. Some of the, well, I mean, it's fresh corn from the field. Some of it needs to be clipped. Always. But uh, while I'm sure that there are some subset of the human population that would find this interesting to watch us shuck corn, we don't want to waste the camera battery for that. So uh, we'll be right back. See? Yeah, we're coming right back. All right, welcome back to the messy ass kitchen mobile cam. Just in case anybody was wondering, this is not a set. We live here. This is our apartment. We live in this. And, and so if there's a little mess in the background, we live here, guys. Deal with it. <laughs> you saw probably a few seconds ago we were shucking corn because we got some corn. So we decided that we're going to try and recreate our best recipe that we made by accident. So one of our, I think it was probably the first run we ran after we got here. We had some Korean frozen corn and some fresh corn on the cob that I ordered that wasn't all that much, but we used it anyway. And, and somehow it, made the best run of the whiskey best. we've made so far at... At 105, it still tastes smooth. Yeah, at, at 105 proof, it's or 52% or, or whatever, it's smooth and, and sweet and good. And it's, so far, it's our benchmark, and we haven't, we've gotten relatively close. But we haven't made it back there yet. We haven't made yet. it back there yet. So, uh, we took some of that corn that you just saw us shucking, and we are currently... Now, what you didn't see is we also ordered some of that purple corn that we got from yeah, our original recipe. Yeah, that purple heirloom-style corn. It's from Gangwondo. So yeah. we, we fortunately had a friend help us order, so we got more than just, you know, six pieces. So we had to... We had to semi-boil that and then hand cut it off the cob. Yay. There's a lot and, of work and then what this. you see over here is ground corn cob. Yeah. So we, so we aren't losing our corn cob. We're keeping the corn cob because the water that's in here, we boiled the corn in the first time. So it then has some of the starch. we cut the corn off. Then we cooked the cobs in it a second time to soften them up some more so we could grind them up. And now we're boiling the corn in. We got corn from, um, from beginning to end. We got here. corn on corn on corn on corn. We're very corny. We got corn on corn action. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we brought this up to about 180, 190 degrees, and we're going to let it um, sit and gelatinize for an hour and a half or so. Um, and then... Then, because we don't feel like there's enough corn in the corn, we're going to give it some corn sugar. Yeah, we, well, we ordered this previously, so we've got some corn sugar. That's about five pounds. That's not going to be... Because if you're going to use sugar, you might as well use the sugar that came from corn. Yeah. That's well, not quite enough. Going to be quite enough sugar for the for the recipe, but you know we we'll, we add a little extra sugar on top of it to make the difference. Yeah, um, that's where we are. That's where we are at the moment. We're gonna we're finish, gonna do all the things. We're gonna finish cooking this up. Um, now that we've got our Korean corn and our our corn sugar and everything else, and we're gonna see how this run comes out. We'll so, keep you posted. We'll see you on the back end of distillation. All right, so here we are. We're actually about done with the run here, but we got our setup here. We moved the thump keg. We followed somebody's advice online and moved the thump keg off the top of the pot here. Honestly, I don't see where it would make that much of a difference, but hey, I'm willing to try anything. And so far out of this run, we've gotten two quart jars and I'm figuring we're probably gonna be about half a quart on that other one. The last jar is a little bit hazy. So I think we're gonna have to charcoal filter that one. Again, yeah. But, uh, so we got that, and uh, we'll be back in a few for some for some flavoring. Because I think, what are we gonna do? We're gonna put this in a jar with some with some oak and let it sit. Oh yeah, it's getting oak. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be back in a few. All right, welcome back to the next update on our corn whiskey. A little bit of story time because it's actually been a couple weeks since we finished that run. While we were doing that run and we were trying to figure out why we were getting different results from our, our benchmark run, we were calling it, we went back and we looked at the video and we realized something. We had bought a different type of water for that run from a different store. Water's the basis of your entire mash, so if your water's different, your whole shebang might come out different. So, 
we ran around, we found the store that we had originally bought the water from and bought the same type of water. And what you see here is actually three different runs. The one that we made in the video, and then we made two more using the water from the original video and some of our other uh, fresh corn that we had um, cut up and bagged in the freezer to see how the different runs come out and see what the difference was. And yes, the water made the difference. The runs that we made with the water that we went and bought from the other store were much closer to the original. So this is all of our stuff blended up basically and aged with some uh, oak spirals. Now, one thing I have noticed that I do differently than some of the other videos I've seen, people talk about putting those little oak spirals or the oak chips in and leaving it for, you know, six months, six weeks, a year, you know, whatever time. I find that those oak spirals that I have, especially if they're newer ones, like they're, they're fresh out the box and they haven't been, been wetted with any alcohol yet, they haven't been tempered yet, are too strong. And I generally put them in for anywhere from one week to two weeks. One, I get this nice iced tea color. It's not as deep as, you know, some other ones that you see. But I think I like my corn whiskey with a little less wood flavor to it. I like it to be an accompanying note, but not overtake the, the whole kit and caboodle. So what we've got here is, like I said, three runs of whiskey blended together and proofed down to about 85, 86 proof. And they've been sitting in the cabinet for about, well, we aged them for, I think, 10 days and then blended them together. And they've been sitting blended together for about two weeks. So they're a little over a month old. So I can definitely smell the hints of the wood in, in the nose on it, but it's also got that classic whiskey smell too, so. Mm. Yeah, I think that mid 80s, 84 to 86 proof is about the sweet spot for this. Because if you want to drink it straight, it's sweet and smooth enough that you can drink it. It's got just enough burned on the hind end that you can, it, it warms you up in the back of your throat and in your chest, but it doesn't burn. It's got just enough of that vanilla y, oaky flavor to fill out the flavor, make it a little more robust without overtaking the, the sweet corn in it. And if you like your whiskey a little more well, mellow, this is a good proof at which if you're gonna put it over ice, you could enjoy it as the, as the water and the whiskey mellow out. So there you go, folks. The corn may have had something to do with it, but I am more positive that finding the same water that we had had more to do with it. Cause this, this is, almost exactly like that first run. So we're gonna continue with that on. I don't really have any other updates. We've got a bunch of, we kind of got lost in the sauce for a little bit. We had several runs running at the same time. We were making some, I think we were making two different brandies and we had three different whiskeys going at the same time and our apartment's not big enough for all that. So I had to, I had to slow us down a little bit. We got a, uh, we got a pear brandy working right now cause we got gifted a ton of, of pears. I think, I think we bought a small box and then one of our Korean friends gifted us a large box. We wound up with something like, I think it was 25 kilograms, so nigh on 50 pounds a pear. <laughs> That's gonna make a big run of pear whiskey or pear brandy. But that will be coming up. Um, what else do we got coming up? We're gonna, I've, the, I've got Sugar Shine, which I'm actually doing the spirit run, the second distillation on back there. That's coming up. We're going to split that up and we're gonna do some infusions to try some different flavors. We're gonna see how that goes. And maybe once we get some of all this stuff that went six ways from Sunday tied back together, we'll do a tasting video with some of our friends and, and go through our closet and, and see what we have. But that's gonna be all for this video. Like, subscribe, do the internet stuff. See the links below if there's anything important. And uh, we'll see y'all around.